Hello. Hello. This is a pendulum. Well, it's the bottom part of a pendulum, and it's tied off right up in the studio ceiling. And this bottle's full of salt. I'm just going to take this matchstick out of the end, and then I'm going to set it swinging. Straight line. It is, too. Perfect. It's not going quite as far each time. No. Notice. What happens if you swing it in a curve? <coughs> Let's try it. Hold on. Oh, well, that's a good shape. Sort of a very thin egg shaped. Yeah, a squashed circle. They're getting smaller each time, just mm. fractionally, aren't they? Yes, yes. I suppose if you left it long enough, it would just come to rest in the middle. Pendulum. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Can you make it go any faster, Mary? Give it a push. No, let's have a go. Hey, that's that's the same speed, isn't it? Hmm. Oh, perhaps it's going too far. But a tiny one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, that's still the same. I think that's the speed for that pendulum. You can't make it go any faster. Hmm, you might be right. What about mine, then? Ah, no. Look at that. Oh, now, that's going much faster, yes, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. I think it's got something to do with the length of the string, you know. Well, let's try a really long one. See what happens then. OK, here we go. Ah, too long. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. What about that? Ah, yes. yes. That's slower. A lot. Much slower. Hmm. Let's have a go at having them both the same length. OK, here we go. Yeah. Uh, you stop yours a minute and I'll okay. try and level it up. Right. Uh, now, what's, what's that about? About there. OK. Do you think that's about right? I think so. Right, sit yours swinging and I'll see if I can match it. Ah, yes, perfect. So, 
In order to get them going at the same speed, they have to be the same length. Looks like it. Hey, what happens if you sort of fix them together? How do you mean? Well, well, like this, look. Um, wind it round. Uh, you've got the, the yeah, in front? Right. Well, either way, wind it round and then over the, over the top make a loop. loop like, oh, a, right. like a knot. I think so. That's it. Yes, yeah, that's fine. That's, that's great. Yeah. Now, if I get that level, now just hold that one. Mm-hmm. And I'll swing this and see what happens. OK, now let go. Ah! Oh, yours has stopped. Yeah. Oh, no, The look. mine's stopped. <laughs> They're taking it in turns, aren't they? Look, because when mine stops, yours is going. Mine stopped again. And mine goes. Now yours has stopped. Yeah, that's good, then. I wouldn't have expected that. What happens if I take both of them mm -hmm. and swing them um, cornerways, like this? Mm. That's odd. Oh, mine's going round in a, a circle, and then it goes... No, it's straight now. It sort of does one circle, and then it goes straight. Yes, and the straight one's not always the same way, is no, it? No, it's sort of making a cross pattern. It's a bit like that pendulum that drew the uh, the pit pictures, you know, the patterns. Oh, yeah, so it is. Hmm. Hey, what else can you do with pendulums, then? Oh, build clocks. Ah, we tried that ages ago. Or you can play games with them. Can you? Yes, I've got one over here. There you go. Ah, Skittles. Bar Skittles. All right, yes. I'm going to have a go first. Oh, two. Oh, two? Yes. Right. Get the other one. All right. One. Right. Now, it has to go round, doesn't it? Ah! Oh. Here's the last part of the story about the king and the mathematician. And it's my go. Oh, sorry. The castle was strangely silent. For two days now, the mathematician had been locked in his room at the top of the tower. Late into the night, he'd been heard pacing backwards and forwards, and then dashing to his drawing board, only to start pacing again some moments later. On the day before the drawing was due, the Chamberlain received a strange request. I require a bright light to keep me awake, a glass of water to quench my thirst, a sharp needle to mend my socks, and a pumice stone to clean my hands, said the mathematician. Well, certainly you can have those, said the king, but I can't see what use they'll be. The following morning, the throne room was filled to overflowing. Uh, remind them all what the task was, said the king. And the chamberlain, with shaking voice, read out the instructions. <laughs> you are to draw a five-pointed star, but it has to look like a dot. Ah, just a dot, shouted the king. Just a dot and no more. The sun crept round to midday on the sundial. There was the sound of running feet in the corridor outside. The doors burst open, and in tumbled the mathematician, clutching his sheet of drawing paper. The princess looked at the paper, and then at the mathematician, and then at the king. It's... it's not a five-pointed star. It's a dot. Just a dot, she said. The king looked triumphant. As this is a matter of life and death, may I please explain, said the mathematician. Uh, well, all right, said the king, but make it quick. It's the executioner's half day off. Uh, well, your majesty was kind enough to allow me to have a few simple things. Uh, a glass of water, a, a pumice stone, a bright light and a sharp needle. Well, I tipped the water into a basin, broke off the sides of the glass, and with the pumice stone kept moist in the water, ground the base into a magnifying glass. <laughs> Then, with the help of a bright light and the magnifying lens, I used the sharp needle to prick out the five-pointed star inside the dot. I should be honoured if your majesty would please take the magnifying glass and look at the dot. The king took the glass, bent down and looked at the dot. Sure enough, there in the middle of the dot was a star. Incredible! Quite incredible. You've saved your head. You can go free. At this, everyone cheered and said, what a generous king they had. You know, said the king, as the mathematician was about to leave, 
uh, until I met you, I thought mathematics was just about numbers and things like that. Oh, most people think that, said the mathematician. But it's also about imagining. Hmm. Right, a puzzle now. What connects these numbers? Two becomes five, and three becomes six. There you go. Right, now let's see. Well, two add three is five, and three add three is six. Mm -hmm. Right? So, four add three would be seven. Got it. It's add three. That's right. Ah, too easy, then. Yeah? Oh, give I'll me give one. you one. Yeah. Right, let's just wipe this off. Make it a bit harder than that. Much harder. Uh, well, let's have a the bit. Dry stuff. Yes, OK. Right, here right. we go now. Let's think. Um, three becomes seven. Seven. Ah, add four. Oh, uh, yes, that's right. But it's not what I'm thinking of. Another ah, clue? Yeah, please, yeah. Uh, four becomes nine. Uh, no, that must be add five. No, it can't no. be, because that's, it's the same rule. Yes. Give us another one. Well, five becomes eleven. Five becomes eleven. Hold on, hold on. Now, these are going up two at a time, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Ah. Wait a yeah, look. If if you double those. One nine. Double five is ten. Add one gives eleven. So the next one would be six. Where is it? Six. Double that is twelve. And add one gives thirteen, yes? Absolutely right. right. So that's double. That's two times. In brackets. And add one. That was tough. Yes, it was a bit more difficult mm. than mine. Mm. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. Another go one? On. Yeah, go on, go on. You go on for me. All right. Bit easier. Okay, this time. where's Easy. the cloth? Anyway. 